Hello, I'm professional angler Gary Klein, and let me show you, just take a few minutes and show you one of the favorite techniques for me. And the reason why this technique is so close to my heart is the fact that without this technique, I would have not have survived out here on the BASS circuit. In 1979, when I left California, I only had $1,000 in my pocket, and I had a tremendous amount of confidence because I understood the flipping technique in my mind better than any angler alive. I was raised by D. Thomas, and I say raised, I actually met D. Thomas when I was 15 years old, and D. basically took me under his wing. We spent a lot of time fishing together, and he showed me the effectiveness with the flipping technique, and I took it, ran with it from there, and kind of developed some of my own little features to it, but the techniques never changed from the way D. designed it back in the early 70s. Basically, all we're going to do is we're going to take a good quality level wind reel. I prefer to fish with a Quantum Accurate PT because it has, I have a thumb switch on it. Call it the flipping feature. Okay. I'm going to use an 8 foot parabolic bend flip stick. And to me, the bend of that rod means everything. I want an even bend from the tip all the way to the handle. And for those of you that think a flip stick has to be this big broomstick, you don't. It needs to be parabolic because the fishing rod does more than just catch the fish. With the fishing rod and the parabolic bend, it gives you, the angler, the, uh, the ability to present the lure to these shallow water targets I'm about to show you how to do with a lot more efficiency. Basically, the rod's putting the lure in motion. Okay, I'm going to show you the basic flipping technique. And this is how easy it is, and this is how D pretty much showed me. Take your rod. Let out the line about, you know, down on the base. Now, everybody's built different. Longer arms, longer legs, shorter. So you're going to have to kind of develop your own comfort zone with the actual flipping technique. And what you do, bait down at the end of the rod so we know it's eight feet. And then with the reel on freeze pull, I'm going to take some excess line out of my left hand. Okay? Now I'm going to put this together. At no time should you ever pinch the line in your left hand. You should never hold it like that. It should always slide freely. So just kind of, you know, get used to that line sliding in your finger. This is how you practice. Get out in your backyard, stand up the swimming pool and go back, forth, back, forth, and allow that lure to swing. Okay, the other thing that you put into motion is the lure. I want the lure to start to go forward and I do that by look at watch my wrist you don't hold your handle up like this you rotate it on the side and that gives you the ability to use your wrist so I'm gonna drop my wrist which drops bend my wrist which will drop the rod tip and put the lure in a forward motion and when it drops and goes in a forward motion the line in my left hand is how I'm gonna give the bait the distance Okay. and then you'll get your timing down to where just as that bait enters the water your hand should be right at the foregrip of the rod and that's the way I've always held my flip sticks line between the fingers hand on the foregrip because it's a pretty powerful hook set and you usually you're pulling these fish out of some pretty heavy cover so you drop the rod tip put the lure in the motion and your left hand should be on the foregrip of the rod and the bait itself is so easy to work because we're not doing anything with it as anglers. We're allowing the cover that we're flipping into, that's what gives the bait all the action because all I'm gonna do is pitch it in there or flip it in there, pull it up and over a branch, let it drop, pull it up and over a branch, let it drop, pull it up and over a branch, let it drop. And you know, I'm fishing right in the heart of it and that bait that you're using, whether it's a jig or uh, you know, like this Berkeley Pit Boss is one of my favorites, but uh, or a crawdad or anything you're using there's your action. When it hits a limb, it knocks it to the side and it goes down. Bass sitting in there, I mean, it looks pretty good. They eat it. The hook set. I do not snap set. I pull set. But one thing in flipping that's so important is you never set the hook until you feel the weight of the fish. Because a lot of your fishing and flipping is visual. You're up shallow. You're in water less than five, six foot of water. You're pitching around the logs in the bushes. If you make a pitch to a boat, I keep saying pitch and I shouldn't, it's flip. You flip to a bush and the whole bush shakes, don't set the hook. Because on a big fish, say if you happen to make the flip to the backside of the fish, he's going to eat it. That fish is going to move some real estate when it swings back around to get the bait. And I see so many anglers miss big fish because they flip in there and everything moves and they jerk and there's nothing there. 
they pulled it away from probably the biggest fish they would have caught that day. So as a rule, I never set the hook until I feel the weight of the fish. Remember, break your wrist, put the lure in motion, follow it with your left hand, work it through the cover, and that's kind of a pull set. It's not a snap set. And what I mean by that is a snap set, I see people drop the rod, put slack in the line, and then they pop it. That delivers so much energy to the line, to the knot, to the bend of the hook. That's where you get yourself in trouble. You break lines, break knots, and you flex your hooks out. So a pull set, a good, even, hard pull set with a parabolic bend rod, dude, you got him hooked. He's yours. You own that fish. So that is a flipping technique. Now I'm going to show you what has been developed beyond the flipping technique, and it's what we call pitching. The same exact principle. Now this is something that D. Thomas did not teach me because we were flipping. We weren't pitching. And D started developing it. We talked about it. And the whole reason why we developed it is we try to get a little bit further, a little bit further. Or if you get real heavy cover, how do I get way back up in there? Because I can't get the boat in there and I can't do the tr traditional flip. If I break my wrist and use a traditional flip, my average flip is about 21 foot right in there with my height and my arm length. But if I have a target that's out beyond, then what I'll do is I'll just make a pitch to it and I can increase my length simply by just making a pitch. So it, everything else with the pitch is the exact same thing with flipping. Line on the foregrip as soon as the lure enters the water. The only difference is the fact that I'm using the leverage of the rod to put the lure in motion and I'm still thumbing the spool for a nice quiet entry. Hands on the foregrip and I'm ready to go. But let me just kind of walk you down the bank and I'll show you the reason why both of them kind of work hand in hand, flipping and pitching. So say for example, I'm using the traditional flip and I'm working the shoreline, picking the cover apart, you know, back side, right side, left side, front side, down the middle. This right here is what, what it, how it looks, you know, when we flip. But let's say I'm going down the bank making these flips and all of a sudden I see something way beyond. I'm not going to stop the boat, but I make sure that I want to get the bait up there. Well, then I'll make the flip, and then I'll just reel it in after I've worked it. Make the pitch, back beyond my length, kind of work it back a little bit. Grass. And then I'll go right back to a tr uh, traditional flip. So anyhow, that's pretty much it in a nutshell. It's real basic, real easy. But you, the angler, have to take the time to go practice. And if you have time to go fun fishing or whatever, you really want to advance yourself with these techniques, do a little bit of homework. Go out and practice. Thank you.